Hello and welcome to Algebra 1, practice set number 3, where we're going to look at some additional practice problems for our lesson on the addition property of equality. All right, so for the problems we're going to look at, we want to solve each equation and check the result. All right, so we're going to begin today with x minus 1 equals negative 3. So just to give you a quick kind of rundown of what we did in the lesson, we learned how to solve linear equations in one variable that resemble this format, sort of x plus some number equals some number. We do it using something known as the addition property of equality. Now what the addition property of equality tells us is that we can add or subtract the same number to or in the case of subtraction from both sides of the equation. Now the reason we need this is that our goal is to isolate the variable in the equation. So with this one, x minus 1 equals negative 3, I want to isolate x, I want to isolate x on the left side. So in order to do that, I've got to find a way to get rid of this minus 1. And to make it easy, I could just think of this as x plus negative 1 equals negative 3. So what value can I add to the left side of the equation to make negative 1 disappear? Well, recall our friend 0. If I add 0 to something, it's just the same number, right? So if I was to make this into x plus 0, I would just have x. Right? I would no longer have anything other than x on that side of the equation. So in order to do that, I think back to when we were adding opposites. Right? If I add a number and its opposite, I always end up with 0. So what I want to do is I want to add the opposite of negative 1 to the left side of the equation. So let's add plus 1, right? That's the opposite of negative 1. And then the addition property of equality tells me that I can only do this if I do it to the right side as well. So I've also got to have a plus 1 over here also. Kind of think about it as a scale. You're just maintaining the balance. So if I add 1 over here, I add 1 over here. Now, what I'll do is just simplify the left and the right side. When I simplify on the left, negative 1 plus positive 1 is 0. So this is gone, right? I basically have x plus 0, which is just x. Now I've successfully isolated x on the left side. That's all I have is just an x over there. On the right side, I'm now just going to have a number. Negative 3 plus 1 is going to give me negative 2. So I have my solution. I have x equals negative 2. And now all I need to do is just check. And the way I check is I take the value I got for x and I plug it in for x in the original equation. Once I simplify, the left and the right side should be the same. So let's erase all of this. And let's plug in for x there. So let's plug a negative 2 in there. And I'd have negative 2 minus 1 equals negative 3. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So you'd have negative 3 equals negative 3. So yes, this solution, x equals negative 2, is correct. All right, let's look at v plus 7 equals 16. So again, I want to isolate, I want to isolate this variable v. So how do I do that? Well, again, I'm adding 7 over here. I just want to get rid of that. So how do I get rid of it? I add the opposite of 7 to both sides of the equation. Right? That's going to let v be by itself. So v plus 7 plus the opposite of 7, which is negative 7. You could also just put minus 7 if you want. It doesn't matter. Equals 16. And then because I did it to the left, I've also got to do it to the right. So here's what I did. I added negative 7 to both sides of the equation. And again, the reason for that is if I'm adding 7, that's what I start out with. I have v plus 7. To get rid of 7, I've got to add the opposite of it. The opposite of 7 is negative 7. So that's why I'm adding that to both sides of the equation. So that 7 plus negative 7 is 0. This is gone, and I'm just left with v on the left side now. Always want to isolate your variable. So v is going to equal 16 plus negative 7 is 9. And again, we want to check to make sure we got the right answer. So to do that, let's go back. We're going to plug in a 9 there. So 9 plus 7 equals 16. Yes, that is true. 9 plus 7 is 16. So 16 equals 16. So yeah, V equals 9 is the correct solution.
All right, now let's look at z minus 8 equals negative 16. So now I have 8 being subtracted away from z. You could also just think about this as plus negative 8 if you want. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you're just going to be adding 8 to both sides of the equation. And why are we doing that? Again, I'm trying to isolate the variable. I'm trying to isolate the z there. So if I'm adding negative 8 to z, or if I'm subtracting away 8, either way you want to think about that, in order to have that go away, I need to add something to negative 8 that results in 0. So I can have z plus 0, or just z, on the left side. So you add the opposite of negative 8, which is 8. So z plus negative 8 plus positive 8, again, I'm adding that to this side, is equal to negative 16. And then because I added 8 over here, I also add 8 over here. It's a balanced thing. So whatever I do to the left, I've got to do to the right. So this is going to cancel, right? Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So z plus 0 is just z. And then on the right, negative 16 plus 8 is negative 8. So z is going to equal negative 8. And again, we want to check. We want to make sure we got the right answer. And the reason you have to check right now is you might make a silly mistake. You might add 8 to one side but forget to do it to the other. You might add the wrong number. At this stage of the game, you always want to check, make sure you got the right answer. So plug in the negative 8 for z. So we'd have negative 8 minus 8 equals negative 16. And of course, negative 8 minus 8 is negative 16. So yeah, this checks out. This checks out. So z equals negative 8 is the correct solution. All right, let's look at two that are a little bit more challenging. So we have 5x minus 4x minus 3 equals 7. So now this looks a lot different than what we've been working with. But when you first encounter the section in your book on linear equations in one variable, the first section is addition property of equality. You're likely to get a problem like this. And what I want you to think back to, remember in the first and second lessons where we were talking about algebraic expressions and equations, we talked a lot about simplifying. So I can simplify when I have like terms. 5x and 4x are like terms. So I can simplify this before I even start. 5x minus 4x is just x, right? Because 5 minus 4 is 1. This would basically be 1x. And we just write that as x, right? We don't need to put the 1 out in front. So we'd have x minus 3 equals 7. And once I simplify this, it looks like something I can solve, right? Something I can do at this point. So if you see something like this in your section on the addition property of equality, it's kind of a little trick question. Basically, you want to simplify first and then attack the problem. So now we have x minus 3 equals 7. So again, I want to isolate the variable. Isolate. And I'm basically subtracting away 3 or I'm adding negative 3. So in order to get x by itself, I'm going to add the opposite of negative 3. I'm going to add 3. Right, the opposite of negative 3 is 3. So x, so x minus 3, then I'm going to add 3, equals 7, and then I'm going to add 3 over here. Again, whatever I do over here, I've got to match it over here. I've got to maintain the balance. Okay, very, very important. So over here on the left, negative 3 plus 3, that's of course 0. So that's gone. x plus 0 would just be x. And this equals 7 plus 3, which is 10. And that is going to be my solution. All right. So let's plug in a 10 for x and see if we get a true statement. Now let's plug it into the original equation, not the simplified version. Because remember, you might have made a mistake simplifying. So you always want to check in the original equation. So I'd have 5 times 10 minus 4 times 10 minus 3 equals 7. So 5 times 10 is 50 minus 4 times 10, that's 40, minus 3 equals 7. We'll go left to right. 50 minus 40 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. So you get 7 equals 7. So yeah, this is correct. x equals 10 is correct. All right, let's look at one that's, again, kind of challenging. We have 8 fifths x minus 2 is equal to 3 fifths x plus 11. So some of you might look at this and go, whoa, this looks really, really advanced. Again, you can solve this just using the addition property of equality. Now, the first thing you need to know is that when you have a variable like x on both sides of the equation, you want to use your addition property of equality 
to get all of the variable terms, meaning the terms that contain you know, your variable, to one side of the equation. So remember, I can add or subtract whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to move 3 fifths x over here. And the way I'm going to do that, let's rewrite this. I have 8 fifths x minus 2 equals 3 fifths x. I'm going to subtract it away from over here so that it doesn't exist. So minus 3 fifths x plus 11. But it's not legal for me just to subtract it away on one side. I have to also do it over here. So I need to put minus 3 fifths x over here as well. Now, what's that going to do for me? Well, over here, it's going to disappear. 3 fifths x minus 3 fifths x, anything minus itself is 0. That's gone. So on the right side now, I just have equals 11. On the left side, I have 8 fifths x minus 3 fifths x minus 2. And now I have a common denominator here of 5. What's 8x minus 3x? Let's just work with the numerators. Well, the x stays the same. 8 minus 3 is 5. So I have 5 fifths x. And remember, 5 over 5 is 1. So really, I have 1x or just x. So I have x minus 2 equals 11. So what started out as something that was extremely complicated looking turned out to be something we can solve with just a simple property that we've already learned. So watch out for problems like that in your textbook. I'm sure they're going to give it to you on homework or a test. Try to simplify as much as you can. Again, the main thing here was to learn that you had to move all the variable terms to one side before you could do your simplification. All right, so now we have x minus 2 equals 11. So what's being done to x? I'm subtracting away 2. So to get x by itself, I just need to add 2 to both sides. So x minus 2 plus 2 equals 11 plus 2. Again, whatever I do to the left, I got to do to the right. So this will go away, right? Minus 2 plus 2, that's 0. So I just have x over here. And this is going to be equal to 11 plus 2 is 13. So x equals 13. And let's go ahead and check that. So the original equation, let me scroll down and write it down here. Again, x equals 13 is the answer. We had 8 fifths times x, so I'm going to plug in a 13 here, or x, minus 2 is equal to 3 fifths, so 3 fifths times x, I'm going to plug in a 13, and then plus 11. So this one's kind of tedious to check, but I think it'll be worth our while just to get a little practice. So I can't really cancel between 13 and 5. I kind of have to just do the multiplication. What is 8 times 13? Well, 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 3 is 24. So that's going to be 104 over 5. And then I'm subtracting away 2. I want to get a common denominator here. So essentially, I can just multiply this by 5 over 5. Right? So it's 10 fifths. Right? This is the same as 2. This should be equal to, over here, I have 3 fifths times 13. Can't cancel between 13 and 5, so I just, 3 times 13 is 39, so 39 fifths plus 11. Now, I want a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 5 over 5. This will be 55 fifths. All right. So over here, I have a common denominator of 5. 104 minus 10 is 94. So I have 94 fifths, and then this is equal to, we have 39 fifths plus 55 fifths. Again, that common denominator of 5. What's 39 plus 55? Easy way to do this is just think about 39 as 40 for a second. 40 plus 55 would be 95. Now, I added 1 to get it to 40, so just take 1 away now. It would be 94. So 94 fifths equals 94 fifths. Yeah, that's true. And so we know that our solution, x equals 13, is correct.